Welcome to Art That Place and Praise. Ginger here. A subscriber requested me to make a review of Derwent Lightfast. I thought of pushing it a step further by not just reviewing the colored pencils, but also doing a Lightfastness test for it, alongside with two other colored pencil brands. So in this video, I'll show you the results of this Lightfastness test, which compares Caran Dash Luminance Derwent Lightfast and Prismacolor Premier. Derwent Lightfast was first introduced in the market in 2018, so it's a relatively new competitor to professional grade Lightfast colored pencils, which for many years have been largely dominated by Caran Dash Luminance and Polychromos. And uh, when Derwent Lightfast first came out, they only had 36 colors at the most. And this is also Derwent's first oil-based pencil. So um, I want to see how well they fare against other players who are more established in this line. But before I dive in, let me say first that this is not a sponsored review. All the products you see here came out of my own expense account. And the opinions are all my own, which you may or may not agree with. I'm only sharing my personal experience with the product which may differ from yours, because from what I've researched, the quality of Derwent Lightfast is pretty inconsistent and different artists' opinions sometimes appear so polarized. And another thing, I, I also wouldn't be reviewing Caran Dash and Prismacolor because I already have a video that dug deep into those products. But if you want to learn more about them, uh, check out the links in the description box and on your screen right now. I, I will, however, show you how well or badly these pencils performed in the light fastness test. Now I'll talk about the basics first. I'm reviewing here Derwent's, uh, Derwent's 24 piece set, although uh, the light fast product line also comes in larger sets of up to 100 pieces. Derwent's colored pencils are pegged at such a high price point that uh, I can't justify the expense only to make a review like this. So bear with me as I speak only of the 24 piece set. Um, well, the tin packaging is nothing to write home about. It isn't as secure as Karen Dash's uh, padded box. Uh, Derwent's light fastness ratings are carved on the pencil tip with LF1 rating being the best. Color labels are easy to read, which is great. And um, the, the chunky wooden barrel sits well in your hands. The pencil barrel is 8 millimeters in thickness and shows off real maple wood. The pencil core is four millimeters in diameter, which is just a, a little bit, a little thicker than the 3.8 millimeter lead of Polychromos. Um, Derwent included more info on the light fastness rankings uh, of each color they have. And in the inserted literature, they have a detailed chart here on which tin set you can find those colors whether they're in the 12-piece 12, 12 set, the 24, 36, 48, 72, or 100-piece set. Uh, this is perhaps helpful for those of you who are searching for a specific color only, and if you want to buy a supplementary set instead of individual pencils, uh, which, by the way, are also available in Amazon. Anyway, uh, Derwent claims that their colored pencils are 100% light fast and that they can last for 100 years under museum conditions. Um, well, you might wonder, museum conditions mean that the paintings are framed and stored under UV protective glass and are subjected to regular lighting and not exposed to direct sun sunlight. Uh, but most of us ordinary people, you know, we don't have the benefit of having museum conditions in our homes. And, and what's not often talked about, in the, it's the fact that regular home or office lighting, you know, like your fluorescent lights, they can also cause fading in the long run. 
Uh, now, if I am to describe uh, Derwent's color selection in one word, I'd call it boring. <laughs> There's uh, there are not so many primary primary colors in there. I mean, the colors are too drab in unexciting and skews more towards earthy tones which are okay i guess if you're into landscaping and portraits but not so much for anything else so so why the boring selection um i'm venturing a guess that it's because the more vibrant colors uh they tend to have more fugitive pigments that will not survive any light fastness test Oh, you know, we all know reds, oranges, yellows, and some greens, blues, and violets. Uh, they have unstable hues that degenerate easily with UV rays. Uh, so some pigments are more susceptible to photo degradation, unlike the grays, whites, and blacks, which are generally more stable. Um, photo degrad degradation and it's the chemical reaction that happens to pigments, inks, and dyes, uh, to paintings and artifacts when sunlight and air combine. You know, sunlight breaks chemical bonds in pigments and causes uh, what you call photo bleaching, which in layman's language, it simply means fading. You know, it fades. Sunlight and air interacting together, they cause oxidation. And oxidation does nasty things like putting rust on iron if moisture is also involved or changing the taste of beer if beer is not stored inside amber glass bottles. In other words, photo degradation is not your friend. You, you love the sun because it gives you light while you're working on a painting. But once the painting is done, sunlight is no longer your friend. <laughs> That's why companies like Faber-Castell and Karen Dash put so much emphasis on light fastness rankings to assure professional artists that their art supplies are worth the investment and you can be friends with sunlight forever. <laughs> okay, moving on. The course of Derwent looked perfectly centered on most barrels, but I did see a few like the violet and the mallard green, which are a bit off. And, and you can tell if a pencil is not centered when you do a 360 degree turn and check how the wood is higher on one side and lower on the other side. Like, like I often say in my pencil reviews in this channel, off-center course will pose problems for you when you're sharpening your pencil but if the cores are just a bit like a tad bit off center i don't think that will be much of a big deal so you don't have to worry about it now check this out only after doing one one small rectangular swatch with the scarlet much of the lead already flattened out i did burnish a little on the rightmost side of the swatch but that's just a tiny piece and and shouldn't have eaten away the core too much. So, so yeah, I'm not so happy about that. What I find puzzling, though, is that not all the pencils flatten out as quickly. The brown ochre, for instance, uh, still looks pretty sharp, even though I swatched it the same way as the scarlet. I, I did notice, though, that some colors are more scratchy than others. It, it's like... Uh, it's as if there are grains embedded with the pigments and it feels like I'm coloring with chopsticks. This leads me to another puzzling dilemma. You know, because like Derwent claims their pencils are creamy. I, I know other reviewers I've seen also say the Derwent Lightfast pencils are creamy. I'm not sure if it's because those reviewers received free products and are thus beholden to the company to speak positively only, or I don't know if my set is just a fluke and I got pencils that perform at a subpar level. Nevertheless, my experience with Derwent Lightfast is nowhere near what the company claims as creamy. If I'm being honest here, I even risk offending Derwent by saying that coloring with these pencils is not fun at all. I'm not enjoying it at all. 
Prismacolor is fun to use, but those are wax-based pencils. For similar oil-based pencils, Polychromos and Caran d'Ache Luminance are what I'll categorize as creamy and easily blendable. But for me, Derwent Light Fast is not yet within that league. I'm finding that simply layering one color on top of the other doesn't blend pigments as well as other brands could. With Derwent, I have to apply with a heavy hand and burnish to get the desired effect. One thing positive, though, is that the paint-dipped end of the pencil seems accurate. I mean, the color indicator looks sufficiently matched with the actual paint swatch. But I'm only speaking for this tiny 24-piece set that I have. I, I can't verify for the larger sets of 42, 72, or 100 pencils. If you have experience with the larger sets, do let me know in the comments what you think about them. If it matters to you that you get a wide range of colors, you'll probably, you'll definitely be disappointed with uh, Derwent Light Fast because their palette is so limited. Un unless, of course, you have the funds to buy their full range of 100 pencils. It retails at such a high price point, uh, you know, in Canada, here in Canada, it's roughly $4 a pencil. And yet it doesn't give you enough representation of the color spectrum. So you kind of feel cheated. And, and like I mentioned before, the colors are drab. I'm just making a super wild guess here. Um, but it looks like most colors in the set have gray tones or a tinge of black pigments mixed in there that takes away the vibrancy of the colors. And I wouldn't be surprised if my conjecture uh, proves to be true uh, because research has shown that carbon black pigments are stable against UV rays and adding carbon black to pigments increases the color's UV protection. Uh, carbon black is... Uh, it's such an important pigment. That's why it's used in the manufacture of car steering wheels, car dashboards, and vehicle tires. Uh, no matter how much sun exposure your car gets, right? Uh, the dashboard doesn't fade. Of course, that this is just my two cents worth of, of opinion. So <laughs> don't quote me on this. In other words... Um, Pigment formulations are company trade secrets, so I don't know how Derwent produces their colored pencils. I can just surmise from looking at the product how Derwent is not as boldly saturated as, as maybe like Prismacolor or Polychromos. Now, after making swatches for Derwent, I... I went ahead and cut the columns. One sample will stay inside my portfolio binder, which I will keep inside a dark closet throughout the duration of uh, my uh, experiment. The other strip of swatches will be sunbathing right by my uh, south-facing window, which gets plenty of sun throughout the day. I'll do this process for all the three brands in this uh, test. I'm going to create swatches also for Luminance and Prismacolor, following the same pattern of coloring as I did with Derwent. So my strokes will go in, go in four different directions, like you see here, slanting to the right, slanting to the left, horizontal and vertical. And I'm doing it this way so that I can maximize coverage. I, I want to see how well the pigments adhere to the substrate if the paper is really sufficiently colored or if there are plenty of gaps that the colored pencils will leave behind. In creating the swatches, I also apply moderate pressure only. After coloring with Derwent Lightfast, I can immediately feel the difference with Caran d'Ache. My luminance is hands down, creamier in lay down. I find it a pleasure to use. And as you can see from the swatches, the coverage is way better too, with less of the white showing through the strokes. The Caran d'Ache swatch on my left hand looks more solid and vibrant than the Derwent swatch I'm holding with my right hand. 
And, and unlike Derwent, where I had to burnish on the rightmost end of the swatches, I didn't need to burnish with Caran d'Ache, since the colors are already adhering and layering so well with just light to medium hand pressure. So in other words, Luminance is giving me less hand fatigue compared to Derwent. I, I'm not sure if you can view it well in this video because of the differences in computer monitor settings, but the yellow ochre of Luminance is more saturated and vibrant than the yellow ochre of Derwent. Uh, check this out. Now, while I'm working on these swatches, let me share with you how I did the light fastness test. You might be wondering why I included Prismacolor in the light fastness test when it's a wax-based pencil, unlike Luminance and Dormant. Uh, we already know that Prismacolor has poor light fastness, but, but I want to determine how many weeks or days it will take for Prismacolor to bleach or color shift. Watching the Prisma swatch fade gives me an indication that UV rays are in fact affecting the pigments. I, I kind of want to know at what point in time it will take for lesser quality pigments to start breaking down. Like how many days or weeks will it typically take for ultraviolet radiation to, to break down the chemical bonds in pigments if these are not light fast pigments. All right, so since both Luminance and Derwent Light Fast claim to be 100% light fast, then my hypothesis is that they wouldn't fade or they shouldn't fade within the time frame of my experiment. So if I don't have any other specimens in this experiment that will react to sunlight, I actually have no basis for comparison. So in other words, Prismacolor is added into this test mainly as a benchmark for me, but the info it will provide will also be good reference for us, especially for those of you who now who gravitate towards Prismacolor more than any other uh, colored pencil brand. Anyway, like I said a while ago, I'll be taping one set of swatches on my south facing window that receives plenty of sunshine for the most part of the day while the other set of swatches with the color names will be in a controlled environment inside my portfolio binder, which I will keep in a dark closet so there's no way it can get exposed to UV rays. The experiment is only for a short duration, which I started in February and ended in April. I, I didn't spend an entire year for the test, which might be a letdown for you, but I followed what the blue wool textile fading test does. And uh, they test dye samples for a three month period only. Now there's nothing strictly scientific in my process. If at all, I'd say my light fastness test is rudimentary, is very basic. At the, at the heart of it, I just want to know if my colored pencil sets are really worth the money. Now you have to understand that the rate of fading of pigments depend on geographical location and seasons. A color will fade faster in countries near the equator where it is hotter and more humid than in North America where it is cooler. Uh, a color will also fade faster under a summer sun than in a uh, winter sun. So even if a colored pencil is rated as excellent in light fastness and is said to survive up to 100 years, under museum conditions, which is what Derwent claims for its pencils, right? Technically, it can only last three to four months under direct exposure to the sun. Those are the caveats stated under the blue wool test, which art supplies uh, manufacturers don't tell us. Yeah, sadly, that's a fact. Uh, one thing about my test that I forgot to mention, my window is not made of UV protective glass. And I can say that with certainty because uh, my eyeglasses are made of a special tint that darkens each time UV rays hit it. My optometrist made this for me because my eyes have light sensitivity. And so each time I stand near the windows of my home, my eyewear darkens into sunglasses. So for sure, my colored, uh, my colored pencil swatches are getting direct sun exposure in that part of the house where I taped them. And... 
And another thing, I I turned on my dehumidifier machine to make sure that there's no moisture build up on the glass. Because, you know, I don't want beads of water to destroy my test sample. So now that all the swatches are done and you can give all three brands a quick eyeball, it's pretty obvious that Derwent Lightfast doesn't produce full coverage unless you burnish. And standing alone, Derwent looks saturated. But when you compare it side by side with Prisma and Luminance, it's clear that Derwent isn't all that great. So um, after months of waiting, this is what we get. Here are the sun-drenched swatches, which at first glance look relatively unaffected. But let's look closely. The first thing you'll notice is that the handwritten labels disappeared. I, I use my Stedler Tri Plus Fine Liner pen to write all the color names and arrows on the swatch. On the third day of sun exposure, those ink marks faded already. Imagine, it, it took only three days for the pigments on the markers to turn from purple to light gray. And by the first week, those ink marks completely disappeared. You know, you can, hard, you can hardly see them now. The, the arrow lines on the side of the swatch are gone too. I, I actually need to use a magnifying glass to spot whatever marks still remain here. So take note of that. Most markers are not light fast. Luck, luckily for this Derwent swatch, only the markers faded. As you can see, the before and after comparisons for the colored pencils are not much different. Even if I put the swatches side by side and don't tell you which one was exposed to sunlight, you'll have a hard time determining which is which, if not for the faded ink marks of the labels. So at least for the pencils included in this 24-piece set, we can gather from the results that the pigments are light fast. It makes you question now if the samples were really hit by UV rays since the Derwent colors didn't fade. So let me show you what happened to Prismacolor. Did it survive the light fastness test? Check this. Again, the original Prismacolor label on the top of the column disappeared because the Stedler ink didn't work well under sunlight. All the arrow markings on the left of the swatch faded as well. <laughs> it's as if I never wrote anything there. Okay, I have, a, I have the 150-piece set of Prismacolor Premiere, but I just grabbed a random sample for this experiment. I didn't check their individual light fastness ratings, so going into this test, I had no idea if any of them will fade at all. But surprisingly... Of that random sample, a few shifted in color. And the most obvious ones are the hot pink and orange, which, uh, which faded so much. Like processed red lost its pinkish tone and became somewhat reddish, a deeper reddish color here. Apple green color shifted as well. It became a completely different shade of green. Mediterranean blue became a bit lighter, but it's not too obvious in the video. I, I, have, I have a feeling that if I left this swatch out in the sun for another month, maybe, or maybe two months, that color might fade more. What's, more, uh, what's most interesting about this uh, is that the, the fading of Prisma color happened around the second week. The second week of sun exposure. It didn't even take a month for the pigments to start breaking down. And that's really pathetic. Prismacolor is cheap for a reason. I tell you, it's not the set you'll want to use for your professional commission paintings un unless you're selling uh, di digital prints. Okay, for whatever it's worth. Prismacolor gave us a performance indicator here. So now we know that it's possible for any lesser pigments to react to ultraviolet radiation and start losing saturation after only two weeks of direct sun exposure. Inks can fade in three days and colored pencils with poor light fastness can fade in two weeks. Now what about Karen Dash? See this? No change. Every single color remained intact, as if, as if the 
Swatch was never exposed to sunlight. The colors are still sharp and vibrant, no shifting whatsoever. Except for the fading of the arrows and label, it would be difficult to tell which one of the two swatches was kept in a controlled environment inside my portfolio binder. The reds and oranges are still heavily saturated. The blues didn't fade. The luminous pigments, pigments are all stable, and Karen Dash uh, apparently wasn't lying when they claim that their color pencils are 100% light fast. It's true, it's true, we can see it here. Okay, so just to wrap things up, let me share with you my two cents worth of opinion. Uh, yes, it seems like throw it light fast is indeed light fast. The pencil has a good weight and thickness that is comfortable to hold. The labels are clear. The tin packaging is not really top notch as you would expect from this price point. Dermot should have at least upgraded to a hinged container with a less flimsy pencil organizer inside. Like from my experience, also the lay, the lay down is inconsistent. Now, some pencils are creamy, but a lot are grainy. And um, for the smaller tin sets, there are too many gaps in the color palette that leaves you unhappy. You, you need to borrow colors from a different brand to complete a painting. And, and as you saw from the Derwent swatches I made, even as I applied several layers, the coverage was not complete. The, the white of the paper still showed through. And I'm not liking that. At this price point, I'm expecting perfection from Derwent. So what do I think? Ultimately, uh, I think the cost is so discouraging that it makes me want to just stick to cheaper Prismacolor and sell my artwork as digital prints rather than as originals, which will uh, fade over time. Oh, where I live, light fast pencils like uh, Polychromos, Dormant, and Luminance are marketed at such unreasonably high prices because they're capitalizing on the light fastness ratings as a unique feature. But all, that all of that talk about light fastness, and they're useless if you can't even afford to buy a set. <laughs> I, I love my polychromos and luminance sets, but I find that I'm using them too sparingly because I can't afford to replace them once they're done and gone. You know, I can't buy again. So do I recommend Derwent Light Fast? Uh, sadly, no. I have tons of colored pencil brands in my toolbox, and Derwent kind of sits down there as one of my least favorites, together with Arteza. Honestly, for me, Koinur colored pencils feel better in terms of laydown and blending compared to Derwent. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I love Derwent as a brand. I love its intense line. I, I love their sharpener and their graphic line painter, even though their pens leak a lot. But I feel that the Lightfast, uh, this product line isn't quite there yet. If they improve their color selection for the small tin sets, and maybe if they are consistently creamy and not difficult to blend, and of course, if they position their product at the more affordable level, I'll probably have a different opinion. But for now, it is what it is. Okay, that's it. Friends, thanks for watching Art That Blaze and Praise. This is Ginger. God bless you and see you again next time.